Hello there, I'm Chelsea and this is Tony and you're watching News, Booze and Reviews with our special guest, Dom Bauer. Real estate photographer. Real estate photographer and YouTube pro. And drunk. And drunk, <laughs> seasoned drunk. Dom, what are you drinking there? Uh, tonight, tonight I'm drinking a drink with, which almost has my name on it, Doom Bar. Yeah, that's so, how so, you say your name after a couple of those, probably. Yeah, 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 pretty much. <laughs> Zoom Dr. Bar. Doom Bar. <laughs> Uh, and this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for creating a fast and easy professional website or online portfolio. I think it's great, but you don't have to take my word for it. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony and get a free trial for 14 days, no credit card needed. I think you're really going to like it. And if you do and you want to pay $8 a month, uh, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code PHOTOLIVE. You'll get 10% off. Uh, this week we're reviewing real estate photos because that is kind of the most, most of the way Dom makes his living. And it is a pretty good way to become a professional photographer, especially if you aren't the type who wants to deal with drunken brides and stuff. <laughs> drunken uh, brides. Real estate photography is a lot of fun. Um, if you want to send in your real estate photos for review during the live show, scp.io slash submit. And if you're watching this recorded, join us Thursdays at 5 o'clock uh, New York City time, Eastern time in the U.S. to submit it. We only review photos when they're live. Next week, love. It'll be after Valentine's Day, so That's it's still us. kind of yeah. We love each other. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get some. Oh, you uh, mean that's safe, us in the picture? Safe for work <laughs> love true, shots. Too. Let's keep this PG thirteen, <laughs> and we'll review those and we'll criticize you. <laughs> so <laughs> and sign your whole up. relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. You can type comments in the comments field, and our uh, screener Siobhan, We'll look at them and feed them to us throughout the course of the show. So you can just ask us questions. You can ask Dom questions. You can ask Dom questions. And Siobhan will raise her hand and say stuff to us. Uh, you can also tweet during the live show at hashtag TC Live, and your comments will be answered, possibly, or Maybe. get thrown up on the screen if we like them. Um, up first, we want to go over a few news points just real quick before we get into the photo reviews. Ooh. And Dom, feel free to speak up at any point. Yeah. Maybe you have thoughts on the Pentax KS2. $700 new camera from Pentax. Um, it's a DSLR. I, I kind of wanted to ask if we should bother reviewing it because we don't hear a lot about Pentax. Yes, but when we do, there are people that love Pentax and they feel very left out. And it might be worth just grabbing one and seeing what all the fuss is about. Some people yeah. really love them. Just to show that Pentax Dumb. love. Thoughts. Pentax. Uh, mm. Pentax, there's there's always a couple of people on my Facebook page that are like, oh, the Pentax is so much better than Nikon and Canon and everything, and and try and say about how it's got amazing dynamic range and how you can take images which are almost completely black all the way up to awesome images. I'm sure they're lying, though, but uh, I'd be interested from your point of view, if you test it, to see if you can do it so that you can, because like somebody has they put the on my page, they put a completely black photo, and the next one was a portrait, and they said it's the same photo just edited in Lightroom, and I was like, that is nonsense. But uh, I'd be interested if you guys, if you are to review it, if you could put it to that level of testing of how much you can push the image after it's been taken. Okay, we can do that. We we'll can do, that. do that. We'll find out if Pentax people are liars. I'm also willing to bet those same Pentax people are the ones talking to us. They probably just go to Dom's <laughs> page and they're like, Pentax is the best. They click on ours, go yeah. to everybody else. We know they're not. And clearly, they're just people that kind of accidentally bought Pentax before they realized that there was Nikon <laughs> or Canon out there and they're stuck with that system. <laughs> That's funny you say that because Justin has a Pentax camera. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> boo. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, last week, we made fun of the Olympus Air because they had this really cheesy ad where the lady was in heaven. Oh, yeah. And then Thanks. I stumbled across this picture on Micro Four Thirds Rumors showing a really awesome configuration of the <laughs> Olympus Air. It's got a big lens on it and this big old grip and then like a laser dot sight. That's on top. absurd. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, suddenly they, they turned it around. They made it for, for dudes. So I might be into this Olympus Air now. That looks cool. You Canon's doing kind of a promotion for the new 5DSR, which is a 50 megapixel DSLR bigger than any other full-frame camera. And uh, so this is supposed to show the relationship between the D810, Nikon's 36-megapixel camera, and their new 50-megapixel camera. With mugs?
With mugs. That's some really How lame office is. humor, Canon. Step up your game. <laughs> Hire a comedy writer. Not to mention it's not going to be out until July. I don't know if the mugs are if available you, now or if you have to wait If you see someone months. with that mug, just slap it out of their hand and say, no, <laughs> stop it. What do you think of the Megapixel Wars, the 5DS and the 5DSR? Where are you on that? Well, I, I only recently got a Nikon D800, and uh, you really have to be dedicated if you're going into these ultra megapixel regions. Yeah. Um, I like the 36 megapixel images that you're getting from D800. I are astonishing, but they require four times more effort to get as good a shot. Uh, so in other words, you've got to be more dedicated. You've got definitely using a tripod, definitely having better lenses, definitely having more time to sit down, uh, upload, process, and edit, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So when, it, when they're seeing 50 megapixels, I'm just kind of going, that's really only good for like 2% of the camera market out there. Um, it's a great one to kind of say, hey, look, we can do loads of megapixels. But it's it's a little bit too much and that's not needed by anyone at the moment yet i think <laughs> i'm totally into it <laughs> he loves it he loves that kind of stuff i'm always the one where i'm like i don't know i feel like things have been good enough so far yeah but you need someone to push the envelope i guess <laughs> okay what else we have sigma announced a 24 millimeter f14 art lens another thing i'm into with these sigma art lenses they just are just really well built they're so much better than the canon l and the Nikon top end lenses, they're just so pro and they feel so great. So we've requested one for review. I actually wanted to ask Dom if he thought this would be a good lens for real estate photography. Yeah, do you use primes or zooms? Uh, the, the, the main one I use is the, the widest Canon, so the, the 16 to 35 uh, mm. f2.8. So that, that pretty much covers everything that I need. Oh. Um, if I were to be using another lens, it'd be maybe a 50 mil just for a couple, because I do a lot of videos as well. So it's not just photos, it's photos and videos that I do. So there's some points where you just want to get a buttery smooth, going from like a flower in the foreground to a bootcase in the background kind of stuff. Um, and uh, the 24 mil just doesn't really, not, not really something I'm going to be using for that one. That's um. all I don't think. I wanted to ask you about super wide angles in real estate photography because you can make, use 16 millimeters and make a small room look very large. <laughs> uh, does this, do you ever use that trickery? Does anybody ever complain? Because we shot a house, uh, Chelsea's house that we were selling, and I did that in one room because I thought it was the best way to capture it, but I was not an experienced real estate photographer. And we had uh, people come see the house complaining that the room was way smaller than they thought. <laughs> so what about, so what about super wide angles in real estate? And what about just, how do you portray things honestly versus beautifully? The is no, what I would say is it's not necessarily about the width of the lens. So if you're going Nikon 14 mil or Canon 16 mil, it, it's not about the width of the lens that, or the, the the wideness of the the view that you're getting that gives the wrong impression. It's the angles which you are potentially shooting at it. So there, I've seen there's a great picture somewhere where somebody is inside a paddling pool but they're so low down it looks like the paddling pool goes all the way up to the decking of the house yeah and then the next shot they're just standing above the paddling pool and you see it's only about six feet round and the house is a good 20 meters away yeah I've so seen that picture it's not, yeah so it's not actually necessarily that is they've used a wide angle lens it's because of the angle and positioning that they've put the actual lens is at makes sense uh, but the, the the next thing is also it's a lot of it is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I have, I've gone around, I shot a whole house, and the owner called up the next day and said, oh, I think you've made the room look too small. So it's not necessarily that people think it looks too big. Some, an, an owner's called and said, oh, I think you look at, it looked too small, the bed is too close to the wardrobe, can you come around and change it? And I was like, um, if I did, we'd have to move wardrobes out and create more space on the ground and all that. It would require a lot more effort than just taking another photo. Two days later, a client calls up and says, oh, she's been to that house. That room looks bigger than what it actually was. So from the owner thinking it looking too small to the to a, a viewer thinking it is too big, it's 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 other people's impressions on it rather than, uh, than just exactly how the photographer has done it. Do you typically work for uh, the house seller or a real estate agent? Uh, real estate 
agents. Yeah, um, mostly for the agents. I, I do both rental. But the seller and, still is the one who's complaining, probably. Uh, the, well, well, it was, it was. They would just be talking to the the agents that I would uh, be chatting away to. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to you in a second. Let's pop over, uh, see if I had any other news. Oh, I just wanted to correct this. We covered this last week. We got these sandbags in and we liked them, but uh, we said it was that vest guy. It's the vest guy. The vest guy. Oh, <laughs> On <gosh. a> mistake. <laughs> the vest right. guy needs to register that vest guy.com. I don't know what's wrong with And send with it us. over. Anyway. Uh, he did. Yeah, use the coupon code SDP if you want 10% off. Oh, he did get that vest guy. Yes. Yeah. People oh. still probably found it. Right. Dom's tips. So Dom, well, you real have estate tips. Some real estate <laughs> tips. I don't know if you want the slides or if you're just going to launch right into this. I, I've kind, I'm slightly drunk now, and I've kind of forgotten why I already said it. So <laughs> let's bring the slides up, definitely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to mention because you wrote this to me in an email, and I was like so impressed because I learned learned things just from reading these few tips that you put up. So. Dang, Dom, you know. I was drunk when I sent it as well. Right, I need to remember what I wrote. <laughs> you should try being sober sometimes. It makes the drunkness more fun. You know what, Dom? We can just go look at some pictures and we'll come back to the tips. What do you think? Well, first, I think we should look at Stop It, which is what not to do. Okay. Um, Dom. I, I've got to say, these are some real estate pictures that I did not comb through and find the worst real estate pictures in the world. I simply went to the most recently loaded real estate listings at Realtor.com and just grabbed some random pictures. So these are a random assortment of pictures that suck. They just suck. Dom, well, I think this picture sucks. Do you think this picture sucks <laughs> as the expert? I, this is a brilliant picture. I, I think it's I fine. I no, no problems with it at all. <laughs> I didn't have any problems with it either. What is your problem with this? It, it seems wildly underexposed to me. All the whites are kind of like below gray. Okay, okay, yeah. All right. Well, no, 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 go back, go back. Yeah, go back. I, I've, got, I've got a couple of things. I've got okay, couple okay. Of okay. Okay, uh, first of all, th this is a real estate photo. So it's trying to give you an idea of the size and shape of this room. So you kind of get the idea. But from a photographer's point of view, it really annoys me. Like, people will go on and on and on and on and on about converging verticals. I don't have too much of an issue of it, but whenever you have a fridge at the side there at that much of an angle, it, it, that annoys me, but it, it's, it's not a deal breaker, it's not a deal breaker. Now, the next thing, this is what I was talking, in one of my tips is the chandelier shadows. Look at that light up in the ceiling there. Yeah. Look, it's got like a, a shadow right behind it. So what's happened is the photographer has used flash in this photo, yeah. but it's given a directional flash which has hit that light and it's creating a shadow behind it which looks like crap. Secondly, they haven't turned the lights on, inside, or it looks like there's only one light on in this room, and that's yep. at the window, uh, but at the other window, that light's not on, but yet the main light in the center of the room isn't on. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Those are the things I thought too, and it's also slightly off level. Yeah. What about the the? And I hate the blinds. I don't know what's blinds. outside the window that he's hiding. Maybe maybe it's better with the <laughs> yeah. blinds. Down. Maybe there's something terrible out there. But would you normally draw blinds? Shouldn't you lift them up and show the natural light? Ooh, no. This this is kind of a difference of location. So if outside you've got is another building facing straight onto you, that doesn't look so great. If outside it's terrible weather and there's just wind and trees blowing outside, again, not so good. What I would do, I would still have the blinds down, but not uh, like flat, like who's got it there. I would have them open so it shows you the light coming in. Because one of the things that as a as a, a viewer of the photos, he'd be wanting to look at where is the direction of the sun in relation to a lot of the rooms. Uh, it, again, it may not be something which is important to certain places in America, but in Scotland, we're always like, it's got to be south facing. We've got to get some sunshine. Oh, have we lost me? Have we lost me? Oh, no. Oh, I'm just full screen now. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so yeah, so in, in, in Scotland, my country, they are my country. Yes, my country. Um, that we, are so, we are really obsessed about the direction of the house uh, and where it faces in relation to we are too. the sun. Southern facing, southern exposure, we call it. Yeah, because we're way yeah. far north. So. We're far north, so yeah. we're a little sun deprived as well. Okay, good exactly. points. Let's complain about this. Is taken by the same guy and it had most of the same issues, but you can see again on camera flash as shown by the uh, shadow behind the chandelier 
lights not on. Um, you have this kind of ugly yellow color coming in from the right. Um, Can I say my problem with it? Yeah. Not great. Just don't show that. There's got to be something <laughs> better about the house than two mirrors that look like windows on a faux brick wall. But that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What the hell is that? What am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, I think I nailed it. I think it's a faux brick wall with seams in it with two mirrors that are supposed to look like windows. Why would anyone put that in their house? <laughs> <laughs> Why would they pick that? I don't know. Like I said, this was the very first house that popped up at Reload.com from my area. What so if they were watching just tonight? Just a random picture. Can I know. You imagine? I feel bad. <laughs> but hopefully they'll they'll be inspired to improve their photography and realize that if you're a realtor taking pictures, you are suddenly a professional photographer, whether you know it or not. They uh, should you should learn I a little bit about the skill. What if the person that owns the house is watching? They're like, that's <laughs> Nana's wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nana's the, wall. The kind of important part of this of this photo. It's kind of focusing on this rubbish wall. What's actually, what this photo should be showing is what is next door. And also on the left, I can't see it now, I can't see it. Sorry. Uh, on the left, <laughs> it looks like that goes somewhere. I, is that another room? Is that is that a hallway? What is that? So that the bits of interest in this photo are not this rubbish wall in the foreground. It's actually the connection between one room and the next. So this image tells me absolutely nothing apart from it's got two walls, one with a big hole in it and another one with two fake windows on it. That's just <laughs> utter rubbish. It, it shows me nothing of the actual property. I rubbish. Agree. How do you feel about this one, Dom? Oh, this is brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I like the, the piano on its side, the keyboard. As a real estate photographer, you spend a lot of time just cleaning people's stuff. Like, you move it into the other corner. You're not cleaning, but you're just moving shit around. Why would they leave the keyboard there and not just pick it up and move it? Why wouldn't they turn the lights on? Oh, the, yeah, turn the lights on. Maybe, I know in, when I watch your video, you use flash a lot to just balance like interior and exterior lighting and you're quite careful about it and you want to turn the lights on and make sure the flash doesn't overpower the light so you can still see the, the interior lighting of the house as well as the outdoor ambient lighting and that is a lot of it, like balancing all of that. And this person blew that all. They blew everything and just got a picture of the deck. This is 100% somebody with a point and shoot and the camera has exposed for the bright outside uh, yes. outside of the window or the door, wherever that is. Yeah. And uh, they've had no idea how to change the settings on their camera. What I, what I say to a lot of my clients is uh, whenever they say, Dom, can you go out to this property? You'll be meeting Dave. Here's his phone number. Give him a call. Um, I always say, hi, Dave. It'll take me about an hour to come around, shoot your property, and that's me done. Sometimes I go in and the place is immaculate, it's well dressed, there's pictures on the walls, there's flowers on the table, the table's made with like plates and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this is so good. I come in and I'm done within about 15 minutes. Uh, and I walk out and he's like, oh, I thought you were going to be here for like an hour. And I'm like, I would be. But that's because normally I have to go in, tidy up stuff, make beds, do pillows, uh, put away dishes and all that kind of crap. And, and like, one of the biggest things is uh, I had a shoot uh, yesterday where... Uh, I, I put all the money I had into the parking meter and I was like, oh my God, this only gives me half an hour. I sprinted to the place, ran in. Fortunately, it was made. So the only time I was like, I was just running in going, light switches, light switches, light switches, <laughs> run up the stairs, light switches, light, light, light switches, and went around, shot it all. Did it, so I did this three bedroom, two story property in 15 minutes just because it looked good. And, and that's saying yeah. you can do it fast. I could have taken a lot longer and spent more time um, but I didn't need to because I was able to just smash it. The biggest thing also is actually making sure you turn off all the lights and lock the door afterwards. Otherwise, you get incredibly annoyed realtors saying, ah, oh, somebody left it unlocked and all the lights on. So that's the that's <laughs> number one mistake to absolutely avoid. Don't leave without turning everything off. That's a good suggestion. I noticed you also suggested that you turn the lights on first because lights take a little while to warm up. And that's something most people don't realize. Um, so you shoot your video after your stills because you want the lights to be kind of fully bright for the sake of your video. I just thought that was Correct. a great suggestion. It would never have occurred to me. The, I, 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 and again, different countries, different rules. In the UK, we have got, we used to have 100 watt light bulbs which were bright. Yeah. Now, all we've got are these kind of dull LED lights which barely light up anything. How could uh, they do that to you? Uh, you don't even have sun there. Now they're taking your 100 watt <laughs> light bulb. Well, we're going to see suicide rates just rocket. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so no, it's always get all the lights on and, and, and go around. Because the worst thing is you turn on the lights and then you try and take a video. And 
like as you're panning across, the room gets brighter from left to right. You go, I should have just come in five minutes later. So it lights on first throughout the whole house and then take all the photos because like, you can use your flash to brighten up. But when you're doing video, you're really limited to doing the, your ISO, uh, just bumping that up as high as possible or using external lights, which I must say, I'm using something here which I use now in like all the other rooms. So if a room next door maybe doesn't have a light on, I will put this because it doesn't have any wires or anything. Really yeah. handy. Just put it on a table in the room next door and it gives a little bit of brightness to the room next door kind of stuff. So uh, LED lights are the thing uh, for uh, real estate photography if you're brightening up other rooms which don't have any lights. I want that. Okay, I let's take that. a look at another picture. We want that. So if you could send that to us, it would be great. This sure. one looks like on-camera flash, maybe, but it also features a lot of clutter. There's definitely a hole we... in the wall to the right there. See that white part? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They... They... And it all leads your eye to some nice faux wood paneling and There's an like unmade a, bed. a cord what, here. Okay, okay what, what I will say here is this one, I Sorry. think the photographer has done as best as he can with the situation here. So he has disguised that the room on the right is just filled with sh uh, stuff. Uh, and and he's, uh, at least he's opened the doors to the other rooms to potentially get light into this horrible brown hallway. Uh, and obviously, he's obviously on a, on a tight time schedule and he's not gonna go in and make somebody's bed next door, which just looks disastrous. So he's just gone, screw this, I'll take a photo, I'm gonna put it on the market, and if you want better photos, you can pay me more. So I. <laughs> I commend the photographer on this one for doing a fantastic job. Well <laughs> the only thing that could make this hallway worse is if we put the twins from The Shining right at the end of it. Oh, absolutely, mm. yeah. I'd say that would improve it. It would distract from oh. the cords and... Oh. Yeah, I like this picture because compositionally they went low in order to accentuate... <laughs> With a flash. <laughs> yeah, the dead leaves and branches. So they're working in layers. They have foreground and middle ground here, like a great landscape photographer. <laughs> This one is from Florida. I, I branched out a little bit and put oh, in Tampa, Florida. Florida. I don't want them all to be Connecticut-style houses. Dom, do you have anything to add about this lovely picture? Dom is going to love this. If I was the... Per so if somebody was going to buy this, if I was their dog, that's the angle I would want to be... <laughs> the dog. Like, that is per that's where I'm going to be taking a shit every, every afternoon. <laughs> maybe, maybe they hired a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, a GoPro on a dog's head as it runs around and just take a still from it. Brilliant. That could be your assistant, Dom. Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, this picture I didn't think was so bad, except I, I see this all the time in real estate photography. They didn't bother to move the car. Yeah. And I don't know, there's like a trash can here over on the, the you know right what? side. I would have probably just shot it straight on the side of the house that's not crumbling. Yeah, I, I also wanted to ask about like as far as lighting goes, I, I the house definitely looks better when it has direct light on it. And so you could plan that around having the sun, you know, low in the sky when it's shining on that side of the house. But at the same time as a real estate photographer, you probably don't have the luxury to plan something around the time of day and making sure you have clear skies and stuff, right? Well, well, that that's, that's what you really kind of, the differentiation between um, real estate photographer and architectural photographer. So an mm. architectural photographer will be having, hey, you've got two days to shoot this property. You can do it night, you can do it at dusk, you can do it in the morning. We'll have people mow the lawn, we'll clean the driveway, all that kind of stuff. And the cost is several thousand pounds. When you're a real estate photographer, you don't have the luxuries of infinite time and people cleaning up the house beforehand. So you have to just kind of like, I need to fit this in the day with the other three or four properties I need to shoot. Uh, so you just need to shoot it at the time that you can. What you can sometimes do is like a pre-deployment survey or a pre-deployment information. Just like, so asking the landlord them, when do you think is a good time to go? When does the house get the best uh, sunshine? It, or it, when does the garden get the best uh, time of day kind of stuff. And even if you go at the best time of day and it's cloudy, at least you've gone at the best time of day. So there was a higher chance of getting some sunshine. But again, if you're talking about America here where there's a lot of sunshine, then um, it's just a case of really contacting the, the landlord or the, the, yeah, the owner of the property uh, to ask them their advice of when the property gets, because if, if they say, oh, we've got a massive tree in the garden which takes out half the house, after lunchtime, then yeah. at least you know, right, I'll book that one in for the morning. But with this, with this photo here, 
there's nothing that you can really do about a tattered old brick wall. And the people that will be buying or renting this property will be renting it with this tattered old brick wall. So you don't necessarily want to hide the things which are not so great of the property. You want to always make them look their best. But again, with this one, you're, you've got, is that a wonky angle? You've got a car in the driveway and I was saying bins on the right. Like trash cans, trash cans. Um, it comes and, with trash uh, cans. Free trash can. <laughs> So you bring up a really good point. If there's some deal breaker in the house, you want to show a picture of that, right? If there's something people would, so you don't waste the real estate agent's time by having people come out to the house and then be like, oh, it has a shitty brick wall. So you- Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's not, it's, you always try and make it look its best, but you don't want to hide anything because then A, you look sneaky, um, yeah. and, uh, and B, sneaky. you waste everyone's time. You waste the landlord's time, you waste the realtor's time, and you waste the viewer's time. If you're coming along going, oh, I didn't know there's a giant crack up this wall. But, you know, if, if somebody saw that, oh, there was a tattered wall there, they'd be coming along going, I know I can just paint it, uh, instead of being shocked whenever they get there in the first place. Great point. They're honest in Scotland. In America, we get them in, they say, you can paint this wall. You can do it. <laughs> By the way, I learned about a new American stereotype. When we travel in Europe, we always hear what Europeans hate about us. But he yeah. just said, in America, where you have lots of sunlight. Yeah. He has a stereotype that Americans have tons of sunlight because he lives in Scotland where <laughs> there's not much. That's because he has no <laughs> sunlight. Have... Yeah, he could go to Seattle and would feel probably right at home. <laughs> no sunlight. If I was ever coming to America, I would not be going somewhere with weather as bad as what it is in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this picture is a, like a beautiful place, but I felt like he's a little bit off level. And again, he filled like the bottom third of the frame with just concrete. And then the rest of it is like a garage door. I guess maybe he wanted to show that they have private parking or something. Yeah. But the it's, sky is nice. It's, it's a bit of an odd one. There's not really much that you can tell. Again, with a real estate photo, it's all about your connection from one photo to the next. So it may have just been this place has underground car parking. However, showing the door of the underground car parking doesn't give you any information about the size, the number of spaces, the height of the ceiling, all that kind of stuff. So what I would have been doing taking a photo of the actual car park area, showing you how many cars can fit into it. You know, some people it might, uh, so I was in one another day and you could only get the smallest car possible into it. So everyone only had, the biggest car was uh, one of the new versions of the Mini. Um, I went in there with my Volkswagen Golf and oh my God, it was nerve wracking getting in. That one, it looks pretty big. So it'd be nice to show the fact there's probably Range Rovers and SUVs and all that kind of stuff in there, showing you the size and scale and the number of spaces parked in there. To, again, to show that if you are buying a property here, you've got potentially space for guests that are going to be coming around as well. So the actual shot of the garage door, no importance. The inside of the parking, far more important. You're a wealth of information, Don. I know, I know, he's good. This is gonna be his favorite shot of the evening. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> That's him. I feel so bad for him. I wouldn't normally, he, he doesn't know this is happening. Anyway, <laughs> Dom, do you spot any problems with this photo? <laughs> well, honestly, the Glade air freshener, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Me too. Well, it's there in case somebody makes a duty that smells bad, they can immediately just spray it. That's the first thing <laughs> secondly, I think of. Yeah, some guy of, right? taking a dump. <laughs> yeah, saying like, didn't remove the second toilet roll. Ah, oh, there's just one sitting on top of the toilet there. Sitting on Third, top of wet the wipes. The toilet roll that is there hasn't been folded in a nice and attractive way. You fold also, toilet paper rolls and take pictures of the bathroom. Who the hell has kitchen roll in the toilet? <laughs> who has kitchen roll in the toilet? How big are your shits? I know, it really makes me imagine That's what's going hands. on with him in the toilet. Who, yeah, who puts paper towels in their bathroom but then has a washcloth rack unused? <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, he's got five layers of dealing with his poops right here. <laughs> Two things of toilet paper, wet wipes, glade, paper towels, and then also actual towels. I guess if, if shit gets really messy, <laughs> you can pull out the big bath towel. I see this bathroom and I think, I never want to go in there. It has seen some things. Yeah, that is somebody with chronic diarrhea <laughs> every single day. Terrible diet. There's, there's but, a but, little but towel rack time, here that's empty. But at go the same figure. time, you also kind of look, look at the face of the photographer on this. He's obviously smelling the, the <laughs> dump which is in the toilet. And he there. is He's leaning like, back. I'm standing back. This is stinking. I'm going to close this door as soon as I finish this photo. 
So that, that's why we don't have a veteran photo here. He hasn't gone down to the stink level uh, to get a nice, attractive shot or hide himself behind the mirror. He's opened the door and went, holy crap, photo, slam the door shut. I imagine that door just immediately <laughs> shut. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the white balance in this one? Uh, 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 all right, all right, yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> that's, that's the least of his concerns. <laughs> Okay, that that's all we had for the bad pictures. Now we'll look at your pictures, and who knows, maybe Don will tear them apart too. Siobhan has questions Siobhan had or a question. comments. A couple questions for Dom while we still okay. have him. Um, everyone is really concerned about the fact that your cabinet door is open behind your head. I noticed that too. <laughs> I'm kind of God, OCD. Dom, Dom, get it together. That's ah. Oh! Ah. Ah. <laughs> 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 Just didn't expect shorts. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, um, Tigar <laughs> thinks. Know about my cabinet doors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tigar says he looks like you're in a combination kitchen shower stall. <laughs> Why are people busting Dom's balls about his house? Dom, I just want you to know they about. bust our balls because he's one of ours now. <laughs> if you come on the show, you get made fun of hard by our viewers. Yeah, just wait initiated. till they start on my clothes. Yeah, oh no, I have a couple of those for you later, okay. too. Okay, um, There was also, they wanted to know what the lightsaber light is called again. Uh, this... Yes. ...is called the Gloxy Power Blade. Whoa! Do you like it? Um, I, it's good. The, the one thing I would say about it is it, it does, that's at its lowest brightness, so it does get ultra super bright, yeah. as you can see there. Um, but uh, and it's cool to the touch the whole time as well. The battery says it can go for nine hours. However, I think that's nine hours if you've got it on its lowest power setting, hmm. and the battery takes ages to uh, to recharge. Oh. Um, but other than that, it's it's uh, it's light, it's portable, and every house that I've gone into, and um, where the landlord has been there, he's like. No way, you have a lightsaber. And I'm like, yes, I do. I'm a <laughs> photographer with a lightsaber. And they're like, that's amazing. Like, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> you got anything else, Javon? Um, yeah, you kind of touched on this already. Um, but Chris Reddy asked if cloning, healing in real estate photos is a definite no no or is changing certain things like making a gray sky blue ethical? Okay, uh, uh, so, so that, that's kind of two things. Grey sky blue, absolutely 100% do it as much as, as you want. The, the only thing is you've got to do it so it doesn't look super fake. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's something which takes a while of learning how to Photoshop and just gradually have, like sometimes it's blue, but it's a dull blue, just so it kind of fits in with the situation. Um, but the main thing is not, not make it look super fake. What you shouldn't be doing is removing trees or buildings from behind it in, in that kind of stuff so so that but if there's like a dog turd in the driveway yeah you can clone that out no problem um i in in my if you're selling properties you are in more you've got more freedom in terms of cloning stuff out uh, for example if there are stains on carpets that doesn't make a property look good. So I would I would clone out a stain on a carpet um, if it's a property for sale. Um, what I would do is also if it was a property because most people move into a house and take rip up the carpets and put new ones in. So it doesn't really matter. You just want it to look good. You don't want people's first thing to be going stains. Yeah. And um, if it's a rental property, um, what I would be doing is doing a separate straight on photo of the actual stain, sending that to the, either the realtor or the, the real estate agent or the, the owner just saying, look, there's a massive stain here, get that cleaned. Um, but I would I try and not make it as a, a main point of the, the photo. Um, in terms of anything else, what else have I got? The only other things I've cloned out are my head. Um, <laughs> quite a few times, like in that in that last shot in the bathroom, yeah. um, uh, there's there, I've done a few shots where I've been hiding underneath and I've put my camera up there and you clone out your arms and your hands. Um, and other than that, yeah, it's just, just kind of reflections that are the most things that you probably clone out. What about adding things into a picture? Because when I was selling my house, I had some framed pictures and it would look better if it was symmetrical with one on the other side of the window. So I'd clone uh -huh. it in. It's not like they think they're getting my pictures when they move in. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I would say, I would say that's, that, that as well isn't really an issue. The only thing is that then becomes time and effort. Uh, so a lot of the time with real estate photography, 
is that you want to just take the photo, send it, that's it done. Uh, if you're then spending time of cropping, cloning, putting it there, straightening it, getting it the right proportion, all that kind yeah. of stuff, you're then spending five minutes on a single photo, which in the end may not be getting used. Meanwhile, you have another hundred photos from the day to, to be editing. So that's absolutely fine. If you're only shooting one house a day, yeah, go for it. Plus, if it's your, uh, own, if it's your own house, then you stand to make more from that interaction, so putting more Yeah, I, I, but at the same time for me, it would probably be quicker for me to hammer a nail into a wall, put a picture on, take a photo, and and instead of cloning and cropping and, and making a different internal part of the photo and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's that, the that thing. That's like an editing effort. There's two things you don't know. I'm terrible at hanging pictures, and I'm great <laughs> at adding things in Photoshop, so. Uh, well, well, then that, that's your skill. <laughs> I'll add too, I saw in your video that you use uh, graduated neutral density filters and I had, I've typically presented to people that they don't, they could just shoot multiple exposures, bracket photos, and then blend in the brighter parts. And you made a good point. You even said, I could do that, but this is faster. Absolutely. And that Absolutely. totally makes sense. And also it works in video, which uh, the blending doesn't, isn't that easy to do in video. So sometimes, yeah, there's a trade-off just, you could do things in post and it might even be better. But as a real estate photographer, you're making money, and it is about getting shit done. He gets shit done. And getting your check. Yeah. Absolutely. And th that's where uh, I'm always a bit bummed out with, for example, Nikon with its 14 to 24 mil lens. It's got a big bulbous end. My Panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter lens is a bulbous end. So every time I stick a filter on, you get reflections from behind, or it just, it just doesn't work. So that's why for the ultra wide angle lenses, I'm like the Canon. 16 to 35 on the full frame, it's got a nice flat filter front which I can put stuff on so I can put both neutral density graduated filters which I can just hold on mm -hmm. um, or I can put circular polarizers on nice and easy. Um, and with Nikon, again it's a 16 to 35 f4 VR yeah. which I really like to have a little play with um, and that one's got a flat front as well. So for me, having an ultra, ultra wide angle lens is only useful if it, you can add, easily add filters onto it. Why don't we jump over and look at some people's real estate photos. So these are photos from our actual readers. Uh, we have a this few... person's cheating a little bit. They got like... Oh, no, that's me. That's me. <laughs> oh, that's you. <laughs> that's you. Yeah, oh, these are, are your... These are some examples of befores and afters. Oh, okay. Good, good. I thought someone was trying to get in a lot of pictures with one <laughs> submission. <laughs> Oh, no, okay. no, so, so th this, is, th this is the same property, um, but this was done by the agency before they had me and then after they yeah. had me. Yeah, that first one, you made the room so look so much brighter and airier. Right, More okay, open. so I, I've got a little bit of sunshine coming in, but I've got the ceiling light on. You can see the light um, and you've just got the, you can see all the way to the fact there's a wardrobe to the left and it looks like the drawers on the, on the, uh, the, the wardrobe on the right and the drawers on the left, you can see it's a much bigger drawers. And I try and get it all the way around to the point where you can see the picture on the left hand side of the wall as well. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right up there. Yeah. I didn't notice that at first, but yeah, that definitely looks better. And this kitchen just. What a difference. A dramatic change. The kitchen looks so much larger. Um, it also shows you more about it. Like it's truthful and it's honest and it looks like you shot with a much wider angle lens much wider angle lens but also uh no no okay well I've, I've, it's kind of straightened and all that kind of stuff but the other thing is a lot of people one of my other tips that I've, I've said is some people will go wide angle and shoot super low and the, then what you, you can't really see the dimensions of everything so here i'm at a, a not head level but not hip level so right about breast level um, and there you can at least see the size of the cooker because in some places I've been in where it's actually a very narrow um, cupboard so it's only like a two hob cooker here you can see it's a four hob cooker and you can see the depth of the the sink as well going on in there so some people will shoot super low and all you can see is actual stuff on it that one I didn't get rid of the what is that fire extinguisher or something yeah I was gonna uh, ask. So, yeah didn't tidy up there that was and a, a there, Dom. One in, smash all the lights and all that kind of stuff. But uh, so I'm really missing, yeah, miss that. I would, yeah, I would clone that crap out, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good though. Here's another shot. The, the biggest difference I see here is just the color. You definitely backed up a little bit and showed a little bit more of it. Uh, and you got to see a fire and, too. And did I hide the bog rolls, well, the toilet roll as well, yeah. Oh yeah, you did, look at that. Look at you. Yeah. Hide the toilet paper. And I like the little towel there. I don't know if that was your doing, but 
Yeah, no, no, that, that's something. Some people say, oh, should we take the tile away or should we add it? I'm like, if it gives another thing in a room, a, another dimension to it kind of thing, it's like, yeah, absolutely, definitely keep it. Like, a lot of people say, oh, take all the towels away. I'm like, no, keep the towels there. It's Because if you have towels there, it looks like somebody lives there yeah. and instead of it just being like a cold, unlived in property. Right. I think the one on the left looks almost like a hotel because it looks so sterile. And just yeah. the adding the towel and kind of getting the real colors of the wall, it looks really welcoming. Yeah. Hey, Dom, you're pretty good at this. You should do it for a living. <laughs> I should, I should. <laughs> and then this last photo, look just how much bigger the room looks. Bigger, but cleaner and, and not as old looking. But it, it, it's more just the point of like, I, I can't believe somebody took the photo on the left and thought, that's good. Because <laughs> the, the, the one on the left, the views flash. You can see how it's just hitting off the two sides of that uh, that chair, the, the 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 sofa thing. Yeah, and it, it's just nasty on camera flash, which looks pretty crap. And uh, but uh, so in this photo, it's another thing that's of importance is blown out <laughs> windows. So I'm fully in Scotland. Blow them out. Give it a nuclear sunshine outside, and people think brilliant. It's sunny in Scotland. <laughs> uh, a lot. Some people say, "Oh, why don't you Photoshop in a a blue sky and all that kind of stuff outside?" A lot of times, that just kind of looks either a if you a it takes time, but b it can also look super fake. And also, if you don't do it super well, it ends up just looking dusty and dirty all around the corners of the window, especially with these windows, which are special. They're they're like grid. <clears throat> pattern windows, there's a special name to them, I can't remember. Um, but if you if you don't do the HDR super well in that, it just looks disastrous. Yeah. Is this one of your photos too, or is this a reader submission? Yeah, no, no, so, so that, that's some of the other stuff that I've been doing. Um, so it, you all, like everyone, you've got to have an external of the property, uh, but now property photography is expanding, getting a little bit more People are expecting more, so now I'm bringing in kind of aerial photography as well. Oh, how are you doing that? Um, with a kite. Oh, no kidding. Tom, you're crazy. Yeah. Where'd you get that idea? Because it's always wi windy in Scotland, so you can always have a kite up, no problem. Yeah, I saw you had a dream that you, you got a DJI Phantom and then you crashed it. Which is dreams yeah, can kind of be a bummer like that. that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's my horror nightmare I have every night. <laughs> yeah, it's a totally realistic dream too. Uh, this must be another one of yours. To zoom in. A yeah, so bit. In, in this one, what I'm saying is like on the on the, the photo on the left is the photo that you get straight out of camera. Yeah. And so many people will be taking photos and just going, oh, I I can't make it any better. The photo on the right is all the editing that I've done to it. So uh, changing the um, split toning, the shadows, so they're much warmer, also bringing up the, the white balance and massively increasing the shadow exposure as well. So the actual sky is still the same, um, yeah. but uh, bringing up the shadows so much more. Just like sometimes you can't get it right in camera because the weather doesn't let you do it. You have to do editing afterwards to get the, the best, or at least, at least make it look warm and inviting instead of cold and dark. Do you do that with masking in Photoshop or do you just shadow, uh, 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 pull up the shadows in Lightroom? Uh, just Lightroom and the, the paintbrush in Lightroom. Uh, I, I, I oh, really, the weird. only thing I do is uh, in GIMP. So I never use Photoshop, uh, I use GIMP, <clears throat> which is like the free version of Photoshop. And uh, with that, that's usually a little bit of cloning. Uh, and what else do I do? I do something else with GIMP. Can't remember just now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too uh, much beer. Anyway, do you guys do you guys have a break or oh, yeah, this is this is one of my examples of what a brilliant flat to go to. So on this one You it was like that when you showed up? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So whenever I say, Oh, it's gonna take me a couple of hours to shoot your property, and I go in and I go, actually, I'm I'm just gonna take this photo and give it to you and charge you for the time that I went out to go and take this photo because I am not tidying up that amount of shit. Is that, oh, screw that a guy. table on a couch? Table on a couch with a holy bible on top. <laughs> I like the inclusion of the bible. This looks like a server rack or something. I don't know what that is. That's the back of a freezer. No. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it really wants you to let you cozy. SpongeBob is there. Well, Dom, I definitely heard you say you wanted to hop up and grab a beer. So why don't yeah, you do that? If you, you've got any adverts, I'm going to go get myself another beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do mid-roll. Yeah, yeah. Talk to us about Squarespace. Hey, have you guys heard about Squarespace? Yeah. Siobhan, have you? Yep. It's great. <laughs> and 
What else? We should have Siobhan tell us about Squarespace. Siobhan, what do you know about Squarespace? <laughs> um, I know that your websites look pretty awesome on it. That's true. They I know don't. that my favorite YouTube show and all of my favorite um, podcasts. podcasts advertise for them. So <laughs> I trust you, weirdos. <laughs> yeah, Squarespace does pay us. And, and also, they have the new CD. Who? who? Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Bridges. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Where else can you hear Jeff Bridges? This is my thing with asleep. Squarespace. I have the attention span of a gnat, and I've had probably three other websites where I started them, not quite finished, abandoned them because they're a pain. They take too long to make any small change, and they never looked right because, especially at that time in my life, I had no design experience. Squarespace, you go in, you can literally make a website in 10 minutes. It looks great. Professional designers make the templates. It's cheap. It's eight, it starts at $8 a month. You can get 14 days free without any engagement needed. You don't need to put it in your credit card or anything like that. So you should just try it. Let the website speak for itself. Go to squarespace.com, try the 14-day trial, and I think you're going to like it. And if you do, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code PHOTOLIVE and get 10% off. But um, Yeah, and, I really and it's do not like one of those trials where they want your credit card number ahead no. of time and they'll automatically no. charge you. You only put it in if you want to actually use it. So If you want to see an example, you can go to chelseanorthrop.com. That's my Squarespace portfolio. It's really simple and clean. And I love it. I update it all of the time. It's fun. The analytics are fun, too. I see... D oh Dom, I just saw your butt. <laughs> Did that just happen? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, 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 are you looking at my butt? <laughs> we, well, like, it wasn't like I went out of my way. Like, we put on your webcam and your butt was there. Well, well what, what, what do you expect when you're talking to a Scotsman? <laughs> I Nothing guess under the kilt. kilt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at some live pictures. I'm a so, little afraid to switch back to Dom's camera. I guess it's always cloudy in Scotland, <laughs> but there's also always a full moon. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> I'm leaving all those uh, back cupboards open just for somebody to ask me to open them up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Me to open up anything right now. He gets a little uh, feisty. <laughs> all right. Not shy. Not shy in any way. <laughs> Not um, shy. I, that's the understatement of my life. <laughs> you just showed your butt for no reason. Dom, are these also your pictures? No, no, these these aren't mine. No, no, no. Mine was just like the last six or something I threw up. Oh, okay. Because it. I just want to take a look at somebody else. Maybe this is yours too. Yeah, that's another one of mine. Just showing kind of same same photos, but uh, horrendously taken. So the the real estate agents were the ones in the middle, and then the same rooms uh, are mine on the outside. Yeah. Big difference. So let's take a look at some actual reader photos go, go for down it. Let's, here. Let's, let's have a little uh, critique. Okay. Critique. What do you think about this picture? Dark. Right. Super dark. Yes, yeah, super yeah. dark. Okay, it, good. They've put the lights on. I would have also put the lights on of the uh, the cooker. The yeah. Cooker yeah. Hood. Uh, definitely always put them on. Uh, if there were lights, like where the blender and stuff is in the far, far background, I'd put those lights on as well. Uh, also, the lights in the room which he's in, so that he's obviously in like the dining area. I, I'm saying he. I'm just going to use he as a general term. I think it's Jerry Johnson's uh, kitchen. But no. uh, I would have put those lights on as well. Mm -hmm. so um, also, is that is that just a cup that's just been left on the counter? Yeah, there is kind of more clutter than should be there. So there's there's sometimes there's lots of stuff which you can't move, and sometimes if you don't have the authority from the owner to like if there's like a cooker blender or something. Sometimes I just I won't touch things because I haven't been given the go ahead by the landlord or the owner or the or the tenant sometimes that's in the property. Uh, but a cup sitting just on the edge there, that's something I'd be happy to put in the sink as well. What about the mixed white balance? Because we have sunlight coming in uh, at daylight balance, and then we have these incandescent lights that are making the whole thing just kind of orangey. Would you fire a that flash or try to mask it? Um. Again, masking would be a bit of a pain in the butt. What yeah. I would do is just in Lightroom, going down into the HSL uh, block and just bringing the saturation of the orange and the yellows down by a good little spot. So yeah, HSL, saturation, red and orange is down a touch, and that stops it being quite so super orange. And sometimes just the, the less saturated, because a lot of the time the camera photo will be taken with saturation up high, yeah. and it's better to take it with a little bit lower. 
Great That's suggestion. a nice kitchen, though. Yeah. It is a nice kitchen. Okay, I think this might be left over from our levitation <laughs> series. Uh, I'll import new photos so we can see pictures that people have submitted during the live show. If you want to send in your own live photos, go to scp.io slash submit, though I think we probably won't get to them during this episode. Uh, come on. It's breaking. Tony broke it. Oh, see, it's spinning here. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Oh, ooh la la. Okay. I... Oh. This... This would not be a photo you would put. This is not about real estate, right? Because of the way it's focused, it's about the plants. Um, I kind of like it. Yeah, no. It's, uh, what I see is 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 a it's a nice little photo of a of a plant in somebody's uh, in somebody's kitchen. It's a funky angle. It's a bit artistic. That's absolutely fine. But in terms of real estate, this is telling me not what I'm wanting to know. Uh, this is telling me that you know this doesn't really show me much. Ooh, that's oh next one, next one. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah, this rings. Ah, they live right next to a ski resort or something. Yeah, yeah, it must be a ski house. But either the sky is fake or it's HDR, right? That, that definitely looks like a, a good touch of HDR on this one. What I would say is... See, we see some yeah, masking yeah, here. Or fake, just completely fake sky. Yeah, I think it's just a fake sky because there's some weird masking artifacts. I would say it's a fake sky, but also looks like HDR on the actual building or a lot of playing around with the kind of uh, highlights and the shadows going on this. But what I would say about this one is that it's a big amount of area of n not much of the property. So we've got so much of this giant driveway, which is kind of just covered <laughs> in snow. So I would crop that one right down. We don't need ha like half of that image is just sky. Uh, and the other half of it is 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 the is the path or what do you call it the the driveway how would so, you crop it though because you don't want to crop out the mountain yeah i think they wanted to inc have, yeah. have it horizontal have it more of like a panoramic thing oh but panoramic okay don't need to just take the top down and the bottom up a little bit um but you're because again a lot of time you're shooting onto uh, or the photos will be using a brochure or what we call a schedule um, and you've you're limited like there so you did it better. dom <laughs> dom you took it to the next level um, have a drink. Have a drink. You deserve it. I will. And he I cropped. I will. And he cropped. Everyone on our show takes a drink when we crop. <laughs> Good work. Good work. Uh, oh, wrong window. Oh, it's a pretty this nice picture. This is cozy. The white balance, though, it's off, right? The thing is, what I would say is that white balance is a great thing to have, but you don't have to have it correct. So uh, a lot of the shots here, we will, uh, a lot of the shots in, in the UK, so many of our walls are uh, not white, they are magnolia, which your camera will try and go, oh, we need to compensate for this in some sort of way, and it makes it look kind of crampy blue, and it becomes the wrong color. So what you've actually got to do is actually give it a warm color so it looks more like what it actually looks like in, in real life. Um, and what I say is the, the white balance is something which is there to give a property a feeling rather than than showing the actual color of the property. So there, that to me is giving it a nice warm look. He's got the lights on, he's got the fireplace on, it's sunny outside. To me, I'm guessing this is the same building that was that one that we just saw a second ago. Me too. Uh, it looks like yeah. a lovely, cozy, alpine, uh, like wood, oh, just like, that looks lovely. Uh, maybe the white balance just down a touch because it is a little bit too orange, but I would say having an accurate white balance there to me just looks cold. That looks cold. You That's know, too much. Definitely warm is good, but that may just be a couple of hairs too too warm. Okay. Okay. Good suggestions. This is on a boat. Yeah. Uh, have you ever shot a boat? Yeah. Uh, I have shot from a boat, but not of a boat. Um, and what I would say is that you are massively limited uh, to space in this one. Uh, so, there, and, and the other thing is, I've seen quite a few yacht photos where you kind of go, that is massive. And then you see the, the picture of the yacht afterwards and go, that is tiny. <laughs> so what you're potentially getting is, uh, because a lot of the time the camera will be sh shot from a very low angle, that you'll get this idea of it's a massive, open, like 15-seater cinema complex at the back however the angle that he shot it at i can understand 
yeah, that's maybe a maximum four-person seater now. Um, so I would say that that is actually a fairly honest thing. The only thing is, a lot of it is I'm just kind of going, where where are those other bits? Is that those steps going up to to where? Where are they going? So almost it needs to be further back and wider because it's not just that spot I want to see, it's how it how it's connected to the other parts of the boat. Whether it's a bedroom or whether it's the the stern or whatever you call it in boating terms. I agree. It feels a little bit closed off. Yeah, and mm. I wish he'd shot it during the day because he's relying entirely on flash and it feels very flash Closed, and yeah. it's out, dark outside. Oh, that guy with the face. <laughs> uh, okay, so... It like 10 times. What do you think of this, Don? Would you shoot a real estate picture at night or would you just wait during the day? Um, generally, just because of, of time restraints and having a wife and a child, I don't go out and shoot people's houses during the night. Um, but also, this takes quite a lot of time because you have to go throughout the whole house, turn on all the lights, go all the way back out the house, take the photo, go all the way back in the house, turn off all the lights, lock up. <laughs> so th this is just like, well, good work, good amount of effort. But what I'm really upset about is that he's put all the effort in lighting the house, getting exposure, but yet he's still got this big lamp post on the left, which is giving this nasty light flare yeah. coming in. So that is not a sunshine light flare. That is just a nasty chemical light coming down from the top. And that, that's a bit of a bit of a bummer going on there. So I would have either cropped that out or just shot from an angle a little bit more to the right and to not have that in the image there. But but otherwise, good effort in going in, turning on all those lights, and then heading back out and shooting it again. Yeah, great suggestions. And, and you're right, the color that we get, the like orange greenish color from these outdoor lights, the street lights is, is pretty bad. Mm. I liked that shot though. I felt like I was like coming home at night. Yeah, I'd be very happy I don't mean to, to be negative though. about it. I actually, I actually think it's a good shot. Dom gave some good suggestions for how to improve what, it. What I would say is I wouldn't Photoshop out the lamppost because that's where you're going, that's not cool because that's that's lies. Right, what Feel, do figure do out a composition that excludes it. Not it. Yeah. Uh, oh. So, what? I'm not into this. I'm seeing a lot of behind the scenes of the house, like a toilet next to a hallway next to a staircase. No, I don't know why they would have chosen this angle to represent a house at all. I totally disagree with you. Totally oh. disagree with you. This is this is exactly what I would want to look at if I was looking for a house. Oh, no kidding. Absolutely, well, I don't. Now I know, as you come in, you've got the toilet on the right, you've got a couple of cupboards on the left, and then you've got steps going up into what looks like the kitchen, and then beyond that is the dining room. This one photo, I now know one, two, three, three rooms and a hallway and a staircase. I know so much about this property from one single shot. The only things I would do is desaturate the green which we're getting from the bathroom and the blue that's coming from the outside light that's coming in the dining room up at the top right. Okay, so you're not seeing a random shot of rooms, you're seeing like a good representation of what it's going to be the like connection there. between one room yeah. and the next and and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. What again with real estate photography is never a single photo. It's always a, a series of four or five photos of a property. But this one, so you'd have a single shot of the kitchen, a single shot of the dining room, single shot of somewhere else. But that shot there is something like I know the connection between one room and the next and the next all in one photo, which would be a great one for putting on the on the schedule or, or the the magazine showing it off. So again not uh, architectural photography, but real estate photography. So again, if you're ever looking for a house, or for me, like I'm looking for a house just now, or a bigger house, um, that photo there, I'm going, brilliant, that one photo tells me so much more about this uh, property than I could have expected from four separate photos and a floor plan. Okay, I can see it from that angle, because if I look at it from that perspective, I can see I come into the house, I can take my shoes off, there's a bathroom in the back hall, and then it's accessible to the main part of the house. So I get that. So, so yeah. th this one photo contains a lot of information about the shape and the structure and the connections within the property, um, but it's, it's not like, oh, beautiful. The only thing I would change is a couple of colors, the blue, just desaturate the blue, um, and maybe get rid of the green because it looks like there's a funny smell when it's green. Uh, but other than that, that's, that's, a, that's a high information photo. Uh, Siobhan, did you have any questions or comments? Yeah. Um, whew, sorry. 
Siobhan's pulling up some questions for us or for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dom's hoping you ask about the, yes, the for Dom. cabinet. Um, the cabinets, uh, yep, open. What even is happening in your house? <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, how do you choose the camera perspective? I've always assumed the doorway is the proper perspective because the perspective buyers will see it from that perspective. That's a lot of perspectives in one question. <laughs> how do you choose the camera perspective? How do I choose the camera perspective? I don't know how to how <laughs> anybody I don't, would answer From the front that of the house, like you want to shoot it at the door because that's what the person's going to see when they come up <clears> to the house? I or? assume in any room you'd be shooting from the doorway because you want to capture the whole room. Oh, I see. They're saying when you go into a room, you must shoot it from the doorway because when they walk into the room, that's what they're going to see. There's a, again, this is a, possibly a cultural thing um, and an architectural thing which will be different in different countries but for example where I uh, a lot of the properties in Edinburgh I will walk into the living room I say the, the sitting room whatever you want to call it and from the doorway we can see the the view to the the window a TV usually a fireplace and then the sofa on the on the back wall so that would be the first shot but at the same time I would go to the opposite angle and get the shot looking back so still showing the fireplace the sofa, but also the hallway, which I've just come in from, showing the connection of what is just outside the living room. Just showing a room just kind of only tells you as much of that room as it can tell you. But if it shows you the room and the hallway afterwards, that's, that's uh, again, it's, it's the more information that you can cram into one photo, uh, the better. Okay. Anything else, Siobhan? Um, yes. Sorry, going back. Um, do you charge hourly or by the job? By the job. Okay. Hi, Joe. Um, uh, so, again, there, there's a flexible rate of whether I'm doing just photos or whether I'm doing photos and, and video or if I'm doing photos, video and floor plan. Uh, I'm posting the videos on my own channel or delivering it uh, like a, a copyrights to the actual client and all that stuff. So there's a multitude of different things, but I don't do it by the hour. So it's the content which I deliver to the person is what I'm charging for for and then what I do is is I charge the real estate agents and it's for them to decide where the, the the cost goes from there so they can either say straight to their client saying it costs 200 quid to get this done or they say it's free no problem and they take the hit because they'll get the money back from the added increase in value that they might get from selling the property with the added uh, material for marketing Great. good question yeah um... Do you use Lee filters? No, I use Coke in filters, Coke in filters, whatever you want to call it. Um, they are plastic and uh, they are a neutral density graduated filters. They, if you put two, one on top of the other, it does give a magenta cast to like bright skies and stuff like that. But that is very easily in Lightroom, magenta, uh, saturation down, and it looks perfect. Um, so a lot of times I will shoot with two um, uh, coking filters on the front um, and yeah they're plastic, uh, they're, they're covered in scratches but even though they are plastic and I can have two of them and they're covered in scratches, I cannot see any degradation to the image quality that I get uh, afterwards. I'm just like, I don't understand how the light coming through two pieces of plastic, plastic, uh, <laughs> which has like guff inside the plastic to make it darker how that doesn't make it just total mush. Um, I, I've been very impressed. They were the Koken Pro Z filter pack, and it comes with a whole uh, mount, so it sits on the front of the actual... Oh, wait a minute, I'll show you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid he was going to turn upside down and we'd see his butt again. <laughs> so so th this, this is the filter pack that I use, and it gives you a whole uh, mount thing to stick on the front of your actual camera like that and you put the filters on the front however a lot of the time that requires me screwing off a filter taking off a lens hood and it's just a pain in the ass i usually normally just get the filters out and just go plunk straight onto the actual uh, you just hold it there with your hand yeah just just hold it in my hand uh, and I've, I've never had any and, and a lot of times for the video as well there'll be times when I, if i'm panning up i need to move it at the same time as moving the camera so just holding it with my hand is actually easier and faster way to do, do the job. More questions, Siobhan? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, what's the best scotch? <laughs> 
I think it might be a little racist to assume that a Scotsman knows about <laughs> scotch. Do do you know? Well, no, that's that, that that's that's one of my bad uh, bad 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 Scotsman things. <laughs> is I I cannot stand the taste of whiskey. I've got a friend of mine, um, Cameron, who he he loves his whiskey, Siobhan. and he he goes on tours around Scotland and goes and tastes them in all the different whiskey <clears throat> distilleries. Um, but for me, every time I taste a whiskey. I have that whiskey, and then I black out, and it's two days later. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell happened there? So I've, I've never found out what's, what's a good whiskey or not. It's, it's whatever you can drink, that's a good whiskey. So Here's a pro tip. Don't drink it like beer. <laughs> you understand it's different. But what happens is I drink it, and I go, oh, my God, that's disgusting. Give me a beer to get rid of that flavor. And then I usually just finish the bottle of whiskey by accident. So it's, it's you were the terrible, shame of your country. spiral of day. So Siobhan has a good whiskey right now. It's Whistle Pig from Vermont. It is good. It's good. <laughs> Vermont. Like the, the, when you think of whiskey, you think Vermont. I Vermont. like a Glenfiddich or a Glenlivet for scotch. She's a gentleman. <laughs> I'm Irish. An uh, Irish I have, gentleman. I guess it works. You got any other questions, Siobhan? I do. Okay. Um... Do you use tilt shift lenses in addition to the wide cannon, or do you correct perspective in post? Good question, good question. This is something which a lot of people have uh, mentioned to me in the past uh, over and over and over. And for me, a tilt shift lens that's wide enough, the closest one is Canon 17mm tilt shift which, again, has a massive bulbous front end, so it means I can't put filters on it, which is a pain in the ass, and it costs two thousand pounds and also whenever you get it the amount of micro adjustment fannying around that you have to do to get it so it looks right is such a mind-numbingly pain in the ass pointless thing when all you can do is in lightroom afterwards is go perspective change done and walk away that's uh, tilt shift is is, is for something before digital photography came around. I, I, I have no idea what anybody uses, it, apart from people that do, like, from high up, looking down at people walking around on the beach and they do this funny kind of time-lapse kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. But for property photography, again, maybe, maybe for architectural photography, it may be useful. But again, the amount of times where the <clears throat> sun will be coming within into a property from an angle, and if it's hitting that lens at any angle, you're going to get flare all over your image. So the more, it's more likely that that would be a hindrance rather than speeding up workflow. And if it if it's a hindrance, then it's it's not going in the back. Tilt shift, tilt shift, tilt shift lenses. Too much fannying around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we learned today. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, you have anything else, Ravon? Um, someone's asking about fisheye lenses. That seems ridiculous. You don't use a fisheye lens. Um, I have used a fisheye lens, but really? I was drunk at the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and even if you try and correct a fisheye lens, it, it just it just doesn't work. Well, actually, what you can do, a fisheye lens for doing like one of those 360 degree stitched panoramas kind of thing, if you're wanting to do that 360 VR stuff, uh, a fisheye would be the, the most efficient thing to use because you get the most amount of image in it and you t need to take the least amount of photos. Um, but it's, it's very much a, a, a niche thing to do. And again, the, v, the virtual reality 360 tour kind of thing has massively been considered a, a bit, a bit uh, to 1990 kind of stuff <laughs> rather than uh, 2015 that it is now. Um, I, I recently did a video about a company which had done it, which had done 360 tours, but they had done it really well. Because a lot of the time you'll see them and it, you just get like you're in a tumble dryer going round and round and round and it looks, it's just a nightmare. But I saw one company had done it very well, but the amount of time that they had taken to like Photoshop their, their reflection and the, their, their shadows from the ground and the, the ceiling yeah. and all that kind of stuff, huge amounts of effort for it. But it, it does have its purpose if you are doing a lot, like uh, some nightclubs will want to do like a, a 360 panoramic uh, of their property, or of their, of their nightclub. So fisheye would be handy for that. But you, again, you need a serious tripod, and you can get a tripod head called a Panasaurus Rex, um, which does the 360 uh, panning uh, for you. OK. Uh, let's take a look at a couple more pictures. This is certainly a beautiful location. To me, it looks like a pretty perfect shot, though. I, don't, I doubt that this is a real estate photo, right? This is like a is tourist destination. 
This guy certainly makes it look like a tourist destination. It's got <laughs> cannons outside. Dom, have you ever photographed a house that had cannons outside? Uh, one of the lions and eagles. Um, that, that was pretty cool. I did an awesome video of, of a property with massive stone eagles on the front. Uh -huh. had a massive swimming pool in it as well. Um, but but th this one, uh, yeah, that looks more like a wedding venue kind of location. So the only thing I would say is one of the other things about architectural photography, apart from being different from estate, uh, real estate photography, is that with architectural, you want it to have a timeless feel. So this image almost has a timeless feel. The only problem is there's that tourist in tourist clothing with a tourist hat looking at a tourist phone yeah. that ruins this photo. So if it was just a case of just waiting two more minutes for him to either go back inside or just shout at him and say, oi, bugger off, that would have helped <laughs> uh, that photo just a little bit. Because that, that's what will happen. The average punter, average person will not see him, but other photographers will nitpick like annoying little pixel peeping annoying people and go oh my god why do you see that person I feel like you're biting back? your tongue Dom <laughs> <laughs> don't hold back okay uh this is this the same house yeah yeah okay we saw that. Uh, okay so he's gone a little bit closer and he's taken out the the lamppost there so he's done better but unfortunately the glare from the lamppost is still there so that's only slight slight bummer which he hasn't managed to get out but again it's not bad is that almost a star i see in the background there's a couple of stars yeah there the are a few stars poking through yeah, yeah that, that's cool it's just that that flare is is a dirty flare so it's not just one lovely sunshine flare that's a big flare with a spot and like glare as well. So there's flare and there's glare and it just looks nasty. Yeah, a hat would actually fix that. You, or just hold up something between the light and the lens because it's bit, off yeah. camera. You do a lot of night photography, you kind of figure these things out. Uh, here, let's go. This looks like a gorgeous interior shot to me. Ooh. Yeah, I nice. cannot complain about this one. What about you, Dom? No, th this, this, this person's getting top trumps from me. So he's got a a great angle shot of the location. He, we're seeing the uh, access to the room off to the left, door open, good move. He's got the lights on, good move. He's got the lights on underneath the, the uh, kitchen counters as well, again, good move. And it looks like even as you go out of the room, there's a red room around the corner, again, looks like he's put the lights on there as well. So that is a fantastic job. And it looks like he's used on camera, not on camera flash, but bounce flash going off up into the ceiling but it's not to the point where it's giving any shadows anywhere. So uh, wherever this is, well done, very good job. Uh, that's, that's hats off, well done. Yeah, everything. Look, they even took the cord of oh, the lamp and oh, put it under oh, the rug. The only thing, what? only thing you could have done is put the fireplace on. If oh, you had a, a, that would have been little, nice. Little fire going on. Mm. That, like, one of the tricks that I, I've done in a few of my shots is uh, <clears throat> if there's a real, that's not real fire. Okay, that's not real fire. But if you do have a real fire, just throw in some newspaper, light it. The newspaper creates a massive flame. You've only got about 20, 30 seconds. But there you get a rip roaring fireplace with like five pages of newspaper. And it, it just really gives a great kind of uh, idea of warmth and brightness from the fire with just a couple bits of newspaper lying around. Great suggestions. Uh, OK, what? Oh, OK. <laughs> I don't know why. Wow. People are weird. <laughs> yeah, not real estate. Okay, <laughs> Dom. Somewhere in here, people will have real estate photography. They always do this to us. There we go. That was one. You think this? Yeah. No, back one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on camera that? flash. Yeah. Uh, so, so th this is one of those examples of a uh, chandelier shadow, which I was saying before. So this person has clearly used flash, and so I will use flash creatively. And it's caused a disastrous shadow uh, around both the lamp and from the TV as well. Um, either that or there is one incredibly bright natural, not natural, but like a horrible light source that they've got in this property around there. So again, it would have been nice with the fireplace on, but also this tells me nothing. I don't know, is this big enough for a sofa, for a chair? Is there windows anywhere in this room? This is... This is like a picture of a fireplace and a and a and a TV stand. It's it doesn't really. T it's something which you would have to put in. But if I was putting this in for a photography review, I would originally be thinking this is a crap photo. This is not my best. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay. Wait. 
<laughs> <laughs> this looks like another commercial property, right? Yeah, but that's not real estate. I feel like they just took that picture because they liked it. Yeah, it's a it's a restaurant. Sometimes, okay. <laughs> this is shot on film or something. That's a beautiful picture, but I don't think that's real estate photography. Yeah, let's just. Again, again, what is, dude, smart. what is with the person submitting the weird eye? It's, Why are you it's doing an Illuminati this? They're part they're... of the Illuminati, obviously. Yeah. Ah. They're trying to recruit you. The Illuminati is always screwing with us. Illuminati, huh? Natty. <laughs> they drink natural ice. Uh, <laughs> so this seems to have interior lights are on. Good. There's a nice balance. The light is kind of streaming through. Uh, you kind of get. The impression that there's an outside door over here, they yeah. can't quite see it. Uh, what do so, you think, Dom? So Yeah, no, th th this again is, is a great image. The only thing I would do is try and be a couple steps further back so we can see if that was a door or a window to the left. That's the only kind of thing that, yeah. it, especially if some, some agents won't give you a floor plan um, or they give you a floor plan, but it's really rudimental and you can't quite tell if it, something's a door, a window, or just a gap. So here would be quite interesting to see if it was a, a door that could fully open up both sides or if it's a sliding door. Uh, just that little bit of information that you can get just from the edges of the photo are, are sometimes quite important for people to see. Okay. Okay. Uh, Siobhan, you got any other comments or questions over there? Not for Dom, but I have some for you guys. Ask okay, us. we'll take them. Okay. Um, they are saying the moiré on your shirt is awful, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I thought that when I put the <laughs> oh, shirt on. Oh, Dom's butt! <laughs> Dom! Jesus! <laughs> Just don't turn around, okay? <laughs> um, Chelsea, they want to know if you have a um, radial filter on your, th if you're wearing a radial filter, what? or a graduated filter. Oh, you're sure it looks oh, like my. a graduated filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, upside down graduated filter. It's really. ombre. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, Tony, Chelsea, what is the best mirrorless camera for beginners? You wrote a, a book about the that Alpha A6, 5100. I, I like the <laughs> Alpha 5100. It has a touch screen. And nowadays, whenever somebody picks up a camera, I see them poking at the back. Yeah. Like people want it to be a touch screen. The Alpha 5100 <laughs> does that. It doesn't have a viewfinder, but most. Okay, an older person, Alpha 6000. A younger older person who's person. used to a smartphone won't be using a viewfinder anyway. Mm. Alpha 5100. Good call. Don't play me like that. Oh, what's the highest quality wide angle lens for real estate? That's you, Dom. That's mm -hmm. Dom. That's Dom territory. Um, if uh, that's a difficult one because it, everyone would say if you're with Nikon, the best one is the 14 to 24 f 2.8. However, a you will probably never shoot at f 2.8, and b you can't stick the filters on. So for me, as a working real estate photographer, I would use the 16 to 35 f 4 VR, and with Canon. Canon, I, the one I've got is the Canon 16 to 35 f 2.8. However, the reviews I've seen of the f 4 version show far better sharpness uh, than the uh, than the more expensive f 2.8, which I've got. However, there are there have been multiple multiple times where I've shot at f 3.2 or f 3.5, which yeah. is just something which I just can't do if I've got an f 4 uh, constant aperture. So. It's it like again if I was shooting in Spain or America where it's sunny, uh, then I wouldn't care. I'd yeah go for the f f four versions of it. Totally they're cheaper, of they're sunshine. usually lighter, and they sometimes have VR, uh, and you can stick filters on the front. So the main thing for me a lot of time is being able to stick filters cheaply on the front. So with the Nikon uh, fourteen to twenty four, you can get some behemoth filter kit for that, which costs about a hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, and is massive, but the amount of faffing around and just like packing and unpacking and uh, assembly of that is just such a ball ache. It is it, so pointless. So I would say go for the 16 to 35 lens. I want to go to Scotland now. Yeah, I, d I just want to hear more words like fuffing, yeah. fuffing and bollocks and fanny. <laughs> you just have a very slightly different swear. vocabulary. He's got head. cool beer, he has cool words. Yeah, there's no pants in Scotland. This one, this one I'm drinking is a Black Isle organic yellow hammer beer. Mm. The Black Isle. Now, the Black Isle, just off of Scotland, there's a place called Sky. Uh, Sky Islands off the side of Scotland, and it's an amazing landscape. If you're ever coming to Scotland to do landscape photography, the west coast of Scotland for mountainy kind of stuff is awesome. And the great thing is, unlike in America, 
like uh, Kim and I on our honeymoon, we went to Yosemite. Oh, amazing. However, at the same time, it is so awe-inspiring. It's also totally inaccessible. You kind of go, oh my God, look at uh, Half Dome. And you just kind of go, I could never get up that unless I was doing a seven days worth of abseiling kind of crap. But with, with everything in Scotland, you can climb pretty much every mountain there is. You can, you can stand in the sea looking up to Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in Scotland, and go, I will climb that and I will be back down for lunch. Uh, that's, that's the awesome thing about the hills in Scotland is that the biggest ones you can still climb in a day, no problem. Oh yeah, so the Black Isle is sky because uh, uh, they've got a whole mountain region called the Black, the Black Coolins. Uh, and it's a, it's, they're just made of this dark, dark volcanic rock, and it's a really, really cool. In fact, have you ever seen the start of Prometheus? The sci-fi film. Prometheus? Nerds, you yes, have. Yes, we saw Prometheus. Are. I think oh, yeah. so. Which one is yeah. that? Start that, they're in Sky. And in fact, most of that shot, they did half of it in Iceland, uh, and then they did the other bit in Sky, just because it's like such awesome prehistoric landscapes around there. So there you go, there you go. That's what I'm drinking just now. <laughs> wow. Ew. Good story. <laughs> uh, let's just see if there's any other pictures here that catch our eye before we tune oh out. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh yeah! Uh, <laughs> uh, Who are you? Don't click on it. No, don't, don't encourage them. It. Don't encourage them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't oh my encourage gosh, them. You guys are so annoying. <laughs> and the Illuminati. Oh my gosh. So many pictures. Oh. Uh, the first one gave me an explanation for it, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I thought that was a legit real estate photo. It was okay. with a walker. Well, here's a nice real estate photo. <laughs> Tip shit. <laughs> um, I can see it's a long exposure from the way the palm trees are moving. This looks like a, a fantastic spot. It, it looks beautiful to me, the colors. Are a little heavy. I might even desaturate a little bit, but what do you think, Dom? Um, I, I agree with what you're saying there. The blues are uber blue. Yeah, yeah. they're very almost purple. Yeah, that like if I had taken a lot, a lot of coffee, that's how I'd imagine the sky to look. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so I would the desaturate the blues because uh, it, it just looks fake. That's the only problem. And yeah. I'd probably bring the white balance down. So if you bring the white balance, uh, so it's kind of more around the 3000 area, this orange part would look less orange and the sky would look more naturally blue instead of this kind of purple that it's becoming. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's, that's one which if shot in raw, you can play around with the white balance quite easily in that, but obviously in JPEG, it, it looks pretty good as well. Um, but yeah, it, it, like when, when you're shooting in JPEG and you try and edit, it then becomes purple like that. It just it just becomes, but beforehand, that's just insane blue. That, that is, I've taken a funny coffee for me to see that, that blue. There we go, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, it, we're running real late. It's almost 6.30 now. Uh, so we I have feel a like concert to shoot tonight. Yeah, the we have Quiet to Life friends, is concert. playing at Mohegan Sun, so anyone local can check that out. We'll be there shooting it. And you should just check them out, quietlife.com, I think. They're a really good band. You don't know that. <laughs> I've been to their website. I'm not just like. It's just Google Quiet Life. Yeah. Okay, maybe I made it up. <laughs> Dom, did you have fun? Uh, yes, I did. I did. And you have a lovely set of buns on you. <laughs> you I showed sure your did. butt to I... so many oh, people. No. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. have a weird fetish for sure. <laughs> oh, that's made my week. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us, Dom. If you want to see more of Dom, you can go to his YouTube channel. I think they've seen all of Dom, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. No, don't don't test him. Okay. Dom, no, no, Dom. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dom. Siobhan, were there any final comments or questions you wanted to close on? Uh, God, what do you even do with that? <laughs> um, Oh, they want to know about the two extenders that are on your table. Too bad. Next I, time. It feels oh. like so underwhelming now, but we're going to test the Yongno versus the Canon 2X extender because the Yongno is cheap. And then we have the Yongno 50 versus the Canon 50. But how, how do you follow Dom's butt? Anything would be a letdown at this point. <laughs> That's high praise to Dom's butt. Yeah. On that note, Dom, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you join us again. We're going to put some clothing <laughs> requirements on that. Invited. But uh, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks. Good Next time. time. I might stay sober and maybe clothed as well. I don't <laughs> think you can do that now because anything else would be totally boring. Totally boring. I think totally. next time we need to be more drunk and more naked. I'm not going to volunteer for that. <laughs> yes, yes, you should. <laughs> okay, thanks I for staying up late with us. That way, yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you oh, should. Tony! Oh, hell yeah! I wasn't talking about you. Who wants to see you naked, Open your mouth, Chelsea. open your mouth, Tony. Open your mouth. <laughs> no! Oh. 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 Weird times. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Good night, Dom. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye. bye. Thanks, Dom. <laughs> One last drink for Dom. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Tigar's drinking. That is all. That was a good, that was a good drinking session there. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Dom. <laughs>